What is going on everybody? Dan with Gear Focus here and today we are talking about mobile content creation, specifically the gear that I am personally using to make my content while I am living on the road. Now, if you haven't heard, I've been living on the road for the last three months. I've actually been living in my converted pickup truck. I converted it to a camper, and I've been working as a photographer and a videographer on the road as I've been going along. So since we're a YouTube channel focused around both gear and content creation, I thought, what better video than to show you guys what I am using on the road for my content creation? So I guess the best place to start would be what holds all of my gear, and that is the F-Stop Gear Tilopia Dura Diamond backpack. Now this is more of like an expedition style camera backpack. This is designed for like backpacking and camping and that kind of stuff as well as photography. So I bought this when I was still working for a hunting company and I was in the woods a lot, but this holds over really well to what I'm doing now. They have two different versions of this backpack, but I decided to go with the Dura Diamond because it is like the ruggedized version of the backpack. This backpack can also have several different size camera units. So I have the big camera unit and they have three or four other different sizes that you can put in here. So you can have a whole bunch of different layouts and that was one of the main things that I wanted in this backpack. One of the other things that I wanted to have in this backpack was just sheer protection. I'm used to having all of my gear in Pelican cases, so I'm used to having that really nice hard protection. This backpack has a metal frame on all four sides that allows it to protect all of the gear on the inside. Now obviously, like I said, this backpack holds a ton of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and I'll show you what we got inside. So I guess we'll start right here at the top, and this is my little audio kit. This is my little shotgun microphone audio kit, and I am using the Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone. Now this may sound silly, but this was probably one of the biggest upgrades that I made to my kit in a long time, and it doesn't really even cost that much. But having a shotgun microphone that I can use on either a camera or I can use on a stand or something like that, is massively flexible out in the woods. And then I can also use it to capture ambient sounds. I can use it for sound design, Foley, all that kind of stuff, because I can direct it at exactly what I need it to go to. It is battery powered as well as takes phantom power over XLR. That allows me to use this microphone on all of my cameras. It allows me to use it on my cinema camera as well as both of my mirrorless cameras. Now inside this kit, we also have the hot shoe mount for that, as well as the XLR to eighth inch adapter, as well as the windscreen. So continuing on the theme of audio, I also have a bunch of other audio gear over here. So I have the Rode Wireless Go 2 mic system. And the reason why I like this system is because it allows me to use two different microphones with the same receiver. So in essence, when I use it in the correct configuration, I can get three channels of audio on a two channel source. There's a little bit of finagling you have to do in post to do that, but it allows me to have three different audio sources go into one camera, potentially. Another really great feature about the Wireless Go 2 system is the fact that it does record directly to the body packs. So if there's ever a connection issue, you can just go right into the body pack on your computer and download the file right off of the transmitter. These microphones do have their own built-in microphone. I don't use it very often because having this clipped to your shirt looks kind of funky or, you know, having that clipped anywhere looks kind of funky, but it is nice to have that option for if you want to do like an interview with somebody and pass the microphone back and forth. Now also in my little audio kit, I have the Tentacle Sync Tracky 32-bit float recorder. Now this doesn't get used nearly as much as I thought it would, but it is nice to have because it allows me to capture different things for sound design. And with the configuration that I have with my Sennheiser microphone, I can plug that directly into this and have a 32-bit bit float microphone recording in the field. Now the whole reason that I went with the tentacle sync unit is because in the future I do plan to get their time code system that allows you to sync a bunch of cameras so that when I do weddings or when I do multiple interviews and stuff, I don't have to go through and sync everything by audio. I can just do it by time code and not have to worry about it. And now the last little thing I have in my audio kit is just all of my lavalier microphones. I keep like three of them in here just in this little bag so that I have backups for backups for backups if I need them, but it also keeps them nice and organized. And now rounding out my audio kit, I have two different sets of headphones. So I have been using these custom molded in-ear monitors from 64 Audio since I was in college. Nobody else can wear these except for me. They're custom molded to my ears. Now these headphones are over 
overkill for pretty much everybody because I used to work in the live sound and audio world. So I wanted to hear what the musicians were hearing on stage. So that's why I went ahead and got these and they still carry over today. Now I do also keep a set of wireless Bluetooth headphones with me. I use the Supsu B131s. I did used to make content for them, full disclosure, but I really like these headphones. Um, now th this is the, the like rose gold ones that they have. I also have the black ones, but I really like these. They connect really easily to my PC system that I'm using. I really like these headphones. They sound great. Um, so that's what I'm using when I edit because those can kind of hurt my ears for a while. The in-ear monitors can kind of hurt my ears after a while. Um, so having these and being able to get up and walk around and not be tethered to something is also really nice. So let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the system, which is my camera. So first up, I have the Canon R7. Now, I just got this camera. I haven't really used it on shoots very often. I did use it once for a wedding and obviously here on the YouTube channel, but this is the latest addition to my camera kit. The reason why I got this was to kind of shrink this system down. Three cameras is a lot to carry around, and I wanted to get something that was smaller so that I could shrink this system down. The great things that the R7 offers is a nice small form factor, nice quick hybrid shooting, as well as IBIS, 10-bit color, and 4K60, which is really all that I need when I'm filming out here. Now, after my R7, I have what I'm actually filming this talking head on right now, which is my EOS R. Now, I actually pre-ordered this camera when it was first released by Canon back, I believe that was in 2018, and I've been using this camera pretty much ever since. This camera is essentially like old reliable to me. It shoots 30 megapixel photos. It does shoot 4K video, even though it does have that 1.7 times crop, but it does shoot such good quality 1080p video that that's usually what I use when I'm filming on this camera. The main purpose of my EOS R rig is exactly what I'm doing here. It functions as like my vlog rig or my talking head rig. It's just something easy that I know that's consistent and it works every single time. Now the last camera that I have in my kit is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. I absolutely love this camera. I've been using it for about four years now and I cannot say enough good things about this camera rig. So a Pocket 6K is what I use for my commercial productions. So while I'm out on the road, I do have the opportunity to get some pretty high-end clients that shoot some pretty high-end commercials. And in order to keep up with the standards that they have, I am using the Pocket Cinema 6K. The great thing about this camera is it can function in a really small form factor, pretty much exactly how you see it here, but then I can also build it out into a much bigger production rig if I needed to. And one of the other benefits that the Pocket Cinema 6K has is that it runs off of the exact same batteries that my EOS R and my R7 use. And while the batteries don't last very long on the Pocket 6K, I can use a dummy battery and plug it into an external power supply. And if you're interested in finding out more about the Blackmagic 6K specifically, we have a ton of videos on the channel here about this camera. So I'll go ahead and link those down in the description down below as well as up top over here. And my one big accessory for that Blackmagic rig is my Shinobi monitor. It runs off of NPF batteries and it's sitting on this Nitsa NATO rail top handle. So all I have to do in order to attach this is slide this right onto the NATO rail. Once I make sure that it's unlocked, I slide it right onto the NATO rail. It'll click into place and I can lock that rail, lock this arm and boom, I've got a top monitor. Now to kind of round out the camera section, I wanna talk about my drone that I'm using, which is the DJI Air 2S. In my opinion, this is the best value drone that DJI offers. It shoots 5.4K up to 30 frames per second, and it shoots 10-bit color in the D-Log color space. Now, I know there was a lot of hype around the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Cine when they came out, but to me, they're just not worth the price tag that DJI is offering, especially when you have the Air 2S, which sits at $1,000 cheaper than the Mavic 3. Now with that drone, I did get the Fly More kit. So it comes with the controller and two more batteries. And then I keep the charger and the triple charger down here in this pocket at the bottom of the bag. All right, so next up, let's talk about lenses. So the first lens I wanna talk about is the lens that I'm using to film this talking head right now, and that is the Canon 14 to 35 F4. I have been super impressed with this lens ever since I bought it a couple months ago. It's got almost zero focus breathing, which is really amazing on such a small form factor lens. It's also got really incredible sharpness, and the autofocusing system that Canon is using with their RF mount cameras is just phenomenal. So I can't really complain about the 14 to 35 in any capacity. 
capacity. If you want to know more about my thoughts on the 14 to 35, we do have a video for that as well, and I'll link that right up here. So the next lens I want to talk about is my personal workhorse lens, and that is the Canon EF 24 to 105 f4. I was able to buy this lens really cheap online used, and this has been my primary lens for pretty much every project that I've shot ever since. Now, if you've been around this channel for any amount of time, you know exactly why this lens is my personal favorite, and I don't have any intentions of getting rid of it anytime soon. Now, I know that people really want native mount third-party glass for their RF cameras, but for now, this RF to EF adapter is the easiest and cheapest way to get third-party glass onto your RF camera. All right, so let's talk about accessories. I've got a few small little accessories that really help me get my jobs done when I'm out on the road. So the first thing I wanna talk about is my filters. So for the DJI drone, I am using the Fly More Kit filters that came with it. These ones work great. I don't have any issues with them and they go all the way from an ND8 all the way up to an ND32. Now my main ND filter is the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Signature Edition version 2. I went with the one without the mist just because I wanted to be able to add that later on. I got the 6 to 9 stop version of this filter and I kind of wish that I would have gotten the 1 to 5 because since most of my lenses stop at f4, 6 to 9 typically ends up being too much anyway, so I really wish I would have gotten the 1 to 5. But these filters are extremely well thought out. You can just screw off this back cap and screw it right on to the front of your lens without taking the front cap off, and that allows you to take the filter on and off without touching the actual front of the filter or anything like that. I really, really like these filters, and they're really well thought out. Way to go, Polar Pro. And while we're on the topic of filters, I do bring along my small rig mini mat box. That's what this ring on my 24 to 105 is for. This just clamps right on the front of that. And keep it going with the accessories. I have my SD card case. This is just a standard like Amazon SD card case that keeps all of my SD cards nice and organized. That way I know where all of my cards are. And then I also have two NPF batteries that I use to charge my monitor. I have a lens blower. This gets used a lot, especially out in the desert where it's really dusty. And then I have stuff like my battery chargers, some lens cleaners, and some extra propellers for the drone and stuff like that. Now, something that's kind of difficult to take with you on the road is lighting. And the main thing that I have right now for lighting, I do plan on upgrading this in the very near future, but right now all I have is the uh, aperture old the old aperture AL M9s I have these here because they're old and I can leave them in the truck because they're tiny I have two of them and they're USB rechargeable so it's better than nothing but I do really need to upgrade this all right so that's everything that I have in this main compartment of the backpack now moving up to the top of the backpack we get the access for our computer storage now, right now, I am using the MSI Leopard. It's a 16-inch PC laptop, and it works. It does what I need it to do. I edit in DaVinci Resolve, so it doesn't have as much strain on the computer, but I do plan on upgrading this probably to one of the new Apple MacBooks soon. Um, but for now, this PC does work, and it allows me to edit everything that I need to all the way up to 6K raw footage. So it handles everything that I need it to. I just do wish that it would be a little bit faster. Now moving up to the top compartment of my backpack is where I keep most of my accessories and my storage. So for storage, for my working drives, I am using three of these Samsung T5 drives. These plug right into my Blackmagic, so it makes it really easy to record to those. And then I I can just store footage and work right off of these. Now, all of my hard drives that I have in my kit are SSDs. One small bump with a standard hard disk drive and you could lose all of your data. And SSDs are so cheap now that it's really worth it just to have SSDs for everything. And for my more longer term storage, I'm using a typical uh, SATA drive SSD. I have a SATA to USB-C adapter here in my hand here, I'll show it to you. I have a SATA to USB-C adapter here and I just plug normal SATA SSDs into this and then I can work right off of those. This is what I use as my main like working drive. And then I have this Crucial X6 SSD, which is a four terabyte SSD. And I use this as my long-term drive. Now this is supposed to have speeds up to like 800 megabits a second or something like that, but I've not experienced that with this drive. I don't know if it's maybe the ports that I'm using or something like that, but this is really nice to have 
four terabytes on a drive that's this small. It's incredible. And then also up here in this top compartment, I have some like Advil, I have a lighter, a wrist strap, I have some, just some random accessories that I might need eventually on the road. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for me today. If you have any questions about any of the gear that I'm using, go ahead and put them down in those comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. That stuff really does help us here on the channel. And we are going to be making a bunch more content regularly here. So make sure you hit that like button, you hit that subscribe button along with that bell so you get notified when we release new videos. So I'll put links to everything down in the description down below, but that's gonna do it for this video today. Thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around to the end. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and remember Gear Focus is always here to help you feed your passion.